Open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 Samuel 3. If you don't have a traditional Bible and you want to use one, just raise your hand and one of my friends will bring you one. You can either borrow that or you can keep it. It's our gift to you. Or you can open up the Bible app or the YouVersion app on your smart device and all the notes and scriptures have already been uploaded. If you're watching us online or at one of our services at the Brown County Correctional Facility, sure love you guys. So glad that you're a part of our family and glad you on this beautiful, gorgeous Oh man, incredible summer weekend, getting ready for the first preseason game of the year. Somebody give God some praise. Can we just act like a, like a Southern church for just a minute? If there was an organ up here to, well, preseason, the Texans are coming to town. That's all I'm saying. J.J. Watts coming in Jesus' name. I hope he has a great game and I hope he loses. And so anyway, so grateful that you guys are part of our family. So uh, I, I remember when I was a kid and, and we got a brand new TV. I mean, y'all, it was so big. I mean, it was like, it was huge. It was, it was overwhelmingly huge. It was a 19-inch console TV. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like when, when your TV was a, was a piece of furniture, it was a, was a decoration. It was the centerpiece that you built your whole living room around. Nowadays, we're trying to hide our TVs like they're a painting or some kind of trash like that. But then we wanted everyone to see our TV. And so my parents got their tax return and they went on, and they bought the most beautiful 19 inch console TV that you had ever seen. And when we got that TV, y'all, we got four Four channels. We could pick up four channels on that TV. We got two, four, seven, and nine. We got CBS, NBC, ABC, and CBC. And on the CBC, we could watch Hockey Night in Canada. And I can still hear the theme song. Da, 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 da. That's just, I guess it's like, like a memorable moment in my life. And life was so good. We were fine with our four channels. Or so we thought. Until one day, my dad went to the radio shack and he bought an antenna and, and it had these dials on it. It had, it had two dials. And if you, if you turned the dials, we, we could pick up channel 20 and we could pick up channel 50, which I know only sounds like two channels, but y'all, that's 50% more TV. And we, we were tripping. Life couldn't get better. Until one day, my dad was messing around with the TV and, and, and he picked up just, just, just like the faintest, the slightest signal of channel 62 and channel 62 is from Toledo, Toledo. Y'all that's in Ohio. And, and so he messed with those dials and it was, it was like, it was so close and you, you turn it one way and you could see the picture but it had no sound. You, you turn it the other way and, and you could hear the sound but it had no picture. And so then my dad, being the genius that he was, he went into the kitchen and he got him some tin foil. And he put that tin foil on the ends of our rabbit ears. And suddenly we had picture and sound. We had channel 62 Toledo. Ah! Like our lives were changed. They were revolutionized. I don't remember what we got on channel 62. But just the fact that we had access to a channel from Toledo was life changing. That's what this series is. This series is my attempt to put some foil on the end of your antenna so we can just clear the fuzz, so we can just cut the static, tune in and get on the right frequency. Today, I wanna talk about the fact that God, he speaks to you. Let's pray. God, we love you. We're so grateful to you, God. Thank you that in this place are so many people who, who are hungry for you, who, who are yearning for you, who are pursuing you, who are chasing you, who are beholding you. God, I pray today that you would reveal yourself yet again, that, that you would turn our hearts, that you would just adjust 
those dials of our life ever so slightly so that we can tune in, we could hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week I talked about how to have a prepared heart and I shared a verse that's really going to be our theme verse throughout this entire series and it says this. It says the gatekeeper, he opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. Now watch this. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Aren't you glad that we serve a God who knows our name? We serve a God who not not only knows our name but who calls us by that name, who issues a personal invitation. Isn't it nice when you get a personal invitation? Isn't it nice that even though half the men in this room don't ever want to go to a wedding, isn't it nice when you get invited to one? It's nicer to get invited to a wedding by name than it is to not get invited to a wedding, to hear that all of your friends got invited to a wedding, but they forgot to write down your name. There, there's, there's something significant when someone remembers your name. And we serve a God who, who constantly, incessantly remembers our name. And so today I want to look at a story in the Old Testament that illustrates that fact. Because sometimes I, I need that reminder. Sometimes I struggle in this area, in the fact that God knows my name, in the fact that God calls me by name. Now, don't get me wrong, I have excellent hearing. I, I have always had great hearing, prided myself in my ability to hear even the smallest of things, prided myself in my auditory excellence. <laughs> Y'all, I can hear so well, I can eavesdrop on other people's conversations. I love eavesdropping on other people's conversations. I love being in the lobby and listening to y'all talk about stuff you didn't know that I was listening to. I love being in restaurants and lo- I, yeah, you ever listen to somebody whisper argue? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they think nobody's listening, but they are whisper arguing. I said you, hey, shut your mouth. Hey, there are people around here. That is my boss over there. I need you to stop. Put your napkin in your lap. You are a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some people that are, or people who cuss their kids out, yell. You ever see somebody yell at their kids with just their face? <laughs> My mom had these lips. Can we just be real for two seconds? Can we be like we're family? Can we just be like, I'm not a preacher and you're not a listener? My brothers and I used to call them her butthole lips. You know what I'm talking about? She, she just said, I love you, mama. She said, boy, shut up, my mom used to make those lips. She didn't have to say no words at all. So I had this great hearing. I have, I have ears like a hawk. Or is it eyes like a hawk? I have, I have ears like a hawk and eyes like a bat. Or is it that I have eyes like a hawk and ears like, whatever. Point is, I can hear so good. My kids, however, think I become hard of hearing. My kids will say stuff like, can you hear, are you, man, you're getting old and you're losing your hearing. And when they say something like I'm hard of hearing, I like to look at them and go, huh? What what did you say? <laughs> no, this is, uh, the, what they don't know is I'm not hard of hearing. I'm just tired of listening. Yo, I'm just any parent. Hello? I thought that would be a really funny joke for all the parents in here. <laughs> all the parents. You could say amen to stuff like that. Somebody just elbowed their kids like, yeah, I'm sick of all your time. Anyway, sometimes at the end of a long day, Pastor Sonny and I'll look at each other and we'll just say, whew, man, my ears are full. And uh, I want to look at a story in the Bible about good hearing about having good ears. And this story is so good. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and I love this story. I watch this. It says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Eli was the priest. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. It was a time that due to some bad choices and some tainted leadership, people had all but given up on having hopes and having dreams. They had all but given up on hearing God's voice. It goes on, and it says, one night, Eli whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual 
place. Mm. Now the, lo- the lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark was. Then the Lord called Samuel and Samuel answered, here I am. And so Samuel, who served the priest Eli, is bedded down in the house of the Lord, the temple. And in the temple, there was this place called the Holy of Holies. And nobody else other than the high priest was allowed in the Holy of Holies. And he really was only allowed in there one time a year. We celebrate it now. The Jews do. It's called Yom Kippur. And inside the Holy of Holies was what was called the Ark of the covenant and the ark of the covenant was where the word of the Lord was held. It was the ark of his presence and the Jews believed that it was the place where God spoke. Now don't miss this. Eli, the old priest was over in his old place. Eli, the old priest in a time when the word of the Lord was rare, Eli was over in his usual place. How many of us think we're not hearing from the Lord, but we're not positioning ourselves in the presence of the Lord to hear the voice of the Lord? We're in our usual place. But this young blood, Samuel, who most scholars believe was 12 years old, was in a place of proximity. He was trying to figure out a way to sleep as close as he could to the presence, to the word, to the voice of God. He was not allowed to be next to the Ark of the Covenant. He could not be in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. And so he slept just on the other side of the wall where the presence of the Lord dwelt. And so Samuel heard God's voice. And when he heard God's voice, because he was in the presence of God's presence, he says, hear I am. Then look what happened. Samuel got up and he ran to Eli and he said, here I am, you called me. Did you catch that? He, he hears the voice of God, but he doesn't recognize the voice of God. He hasn't heard God's voice before. And, and sometimes you can't recognize a thing that you haven't heard before. And so Samuel is near the presence of God and he hears the voice of God, but he doesn't recognize the voice of God. So he goes to the one person who he thinks may be calling him. And I love Eli's response. (laughs) See, the Bible's funny to me, whatever. You guys can think it's dry all you want, but I think it's funny. Because the kid, 12, you know, 12-year-olds don't have common sense. And so the 12-year-old comes to Eli, the priest, who's in his usual place, and he says, hey, he woke him up, y'all. He says, hey, what's up? You know, I said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. Come on, where's my parents at? Don't you hate when your kids wake you up, especially for nothing, for some dumb stuff? Your kids will wake you up for some stuff you can't do nothing about. Like, like is the whole bed wet? <laughs> you know, like sleep, sleep, <laughs> sleep on the other side. You know, it's a, put the covers up. Get, up. get up on top of the blankets. No, you can't get in my bed. You're soaked. You know, just, <laughs> go back. To bed. And Samuel, he says, hey, did you call me? And Eli said, "Uh uh-uh, go back to bed and lie down. So he went and he laid back down. Verse 6, again. I love that word. Thank God for that word because the first word in verse 6 gives me hope. It says, again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, here I am. You called me, didn't you? I think he got sarcastic right now. Here I am. You called me, didn't you? I heard you call me. (laughs) Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. Quit waking me up. Go lie back down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Samuel was still young. He was still learning. He hadn't figured everything out. He was still pliable, soft, seeking, searching, which is why he wasn't in his usual place. It's why he was in the seeking place, which is what I love about new believers, is that they don't have a usual place yet. Their usual place is running after God. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, here I am, you called me. And Eli realized he beheld that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Mm. That's one of the greatest responses that we could ever have when we're seeking the Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and he laid back down in that place and the Lord came and he stood there calling as he had the other times. Samuel, 
Samuel. And in case you're not counting, that's the fourth time. He says, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something. And I love how God gives them an announcement. God is an announcing God. He told Noah, it's fixing to rain. He told Moses, I'm about to deliver the children of Israel. He told Mary, I'm about to do something. You should call him Jesus. He will save the people from their sins. He told the shepherds, somebody is about to be born and he's gonna change the world. I love that God is an announcing God because I am an announcing dad. Sometimes I say, hey! Hey, you better cut that out. I'm fixing to get up out of this chair. Most dads don't do anything that they say they're about to do anyway. <laughs> but I'm an announcing dad because I really don't want to do anything. I, I am an announcer. Luckily, God doesn't only speak. He also acts. And he said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that would make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. Then something, it shifts. See, Eli, the priest, who had been in his usual place, had forgotten his usual duties. See, people who've been with Jesus for a minute sometimes forget that they have a responsibility. But Eli, the high priest, the priest of the people, had spent so much time in the usual place that he had become accustomed to the way that things had always been done. And his sons were tripping. Go back two chapters, and his sons were wiling out. His sons were the most sinful people. And so because he couldn't control his own kids, God tells Samuel that he's going to withhold his presence from the priest Eli and his family because of their disobedience. Now watch this. I love the response of this young cat, Samuel. He's, it says, Samuel laid down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Even in the midst of this tragic news, even in the midst of this turmoil, and friends, like we get tragic news. We go through turmoil. If you have news on your phone or on your TV, sometimes it comes through as breaking alerts and that news is tragic. And sometimes we wanna react. Sometimes we wanna do things that are outside what God told us to do before we got there and then we do things that are out of the ordinary. But Samuel, in the midst of tragic news, continued to be and do what he had been and done. Because in the face of this difficult news, he determined to stay close to where he had heard the voice of God. And he stays in God's proximity. And I love these verses, love everything about him. Lo love how out of everybody who God could have spoken to, he decided to speak to someone who didn't yet understand everything, who didn't yet have everything together or everything figured out. And, and he spoke and he waited. And God spoke and he waited. He spoke and he waited, and that helps me in my life. It helps me in my listening because sometimes I don't hear him speaking. Sometimes when it comes to prayer or, or hearing the voice of God, I, I just think so much less of myself. If, if we're being totally real in this place today, sometimes I just don't believe knowing me. I know me. I live with me. I, I, I have every moment of every day with me, and sometimes I have a hard time believing that God would actually want to speak to me. Not, not with my situation, not, not with what's going on in, in my life. There's no way that God would ever wanna, wanna speak to me. You, I know you've probably never felt that way, but for me, there's many days that I wake up and I feel like there's no way that God could ever use me because he knows my struggles, he knows my sins, he knows my situations and, and my shortcomings. He knows that there's been times I haven't read my Bible like I wanted to. He knows that there's been times that I went on vacation and I went not only on vacation from work, but I went on vacation from him. He knows that there are times, there, there, there are desert seasons in, in my devotion to him. He, he, he knows that there have been times where I have ebbed and flowed when it comes to prayer, that there's been times where I didn't serve him with my whole heart because I was distracted or because I was sidetracked by my own stuff. There's been times that, that I hadn't given or I hadn't been generous like he had asked me to. Like, why would he speak to me when, when I can't even be responsible to do the basic things that he's asked me to do? He knows that there's been times where I haven't been loving, kind, or patient. Like, every time I am in traffic. 
He knows that, that when I, that like I think about myself in certain ways or there are times where, where maybe I, I get haughty or, or I get proud. You know, most people who are insecure struggle with pride. Do you know that? Pride is insecurity shrouded. And so some people have that, that difficult balance between thinking that God can do something and knowing that they're totally not worthy. And when I think those things, when I think less about myself, I read 1 Samuel chapter 3. And when I read 1 Samuel chapter 3, I am filled with hope because I realize God loves talking to regular people like me, even when we don't get it right the first time. I am encouraged, I'm filled with hope because I know that God knows that people like you and me, we may not get it right right away, but at least we're not sitting in our usual place. At least we're not sitting in the same old place doing the same old thing. We're trying to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. That we're trying to be good parents. That we're trying to be good sons or daughters. That we're trying to be good spouses and good friends. And, and we may not get it right the first time, but here we are on a Sunday morning in beautiful summer weather, which is so fleeting in this place. And and yet we have brought ourselves to the house of God, put ourselves near the presence of God so that we can hear the voice of God. And so today I just want to help you just tune in, just block out the static. And I want to do that by giving you five ideas for hearing God's heart for you. It's just ideas, just, just five things that, that I want you to try. Okay, here's the first one. Is that a humble heart ushers in the voice of God. A humble heart, it gives you fresh ears. A humble heart, is, it is the prepared soil for God's voice. It makes room. A humbled heart evicts you and invites him. It's, it's why he didn't speak to the priest or through the established religion. He spoke to a young vessel who was still raw and pure and humble, who didn't have a reputation, who didn't have an ego. He used the young, which is encouraging to me. I mean, I'm not young anymore. I mean, I, I know I'm a little old, which truthfully, I don't, I don't mind. I, I, I kind of enjoy being old. I, I enjoy uh, being in, in my uh, past, my mid-40s. In fact, I love it because as you get older, you can just say some stuff. You ever be around some old people, they just say some stuff, and you just be like, dang. <laughs> like, uh, like, you can just say some stuff and leave. You can just, just they invented drop the mic, old people. You know, they'll come by and say, boy, you got fat, and just walk away. You're like, dang. Old people say that, you'll get in a fight. An old dude says that, you're like, he's probably right. He's old. He has, he has, as a matter of fact, actually, old cat, why don't you trim up all that little forest you got going in your ears? Maybe you'd hear from God. You ever see those dudes who, when they sneeze, it looks like a party favor because they got so much nose hair and it feels like there's no way that they could hear from God. Because you go, how do you not see that? How do you not? I was by an old dude the other day. He had a hair like my beard on the top of his ear. And it was like, it looked like a rainbow. And I was, I wanted to reach over and just pluck that, that joker out. I love get, like when I'm older like I am now, you can just say some stuff and then go to bed. Like 8.30, y'all. That's me. Like, hey, Jeopardy's over. I'm out. That's all I'm saying. I don't even care. I love it. But even though I, like I may not be young in my body or in my bedtime, I am young in my heart. I'm young in my faith. I'm young in my worship. I'm young in my giving and my attitude. I don't ever want to get to a place where I think I've arrived, where I've got it down. It's why Jesus said, unless you become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Kids believe almost everything. You can tell a kid, hey, guess what? Tomorrow, we're gonna go on a trip. So try this with your four-year-old today. Hey, guess what, buddy? Tomorrow, we're gonna go on a trip. I need you to go to bed early tonight because tomorrow we're gonna fly to Mars. <gasps> You're like, they, they don't know that there's no technology to do that. And when you're a child-like, not childish, when you're childlike in your faith, God can tell you that you can actually do something and you'll believe that you can do it because you have a heart that's pliable, that's teachable. That's why growth track is so important. Growth track is submitting yourself and committing yourself to serve. Please don't think just because we're a big church, there's no place for you. Humble yourself. Ask, where can I serve? Serving keeps your spirit young. And when your spirit is young, it keeps your signal strength strong. A humble heart ushers in the voice of God. Here's a second idea. Every verse speaks his voice. 
Did you know that there is potential in every passage? There is potential on every page in this book. And when you take that potential and you mix it with your faith, it becomes purpose. Because when you recognize the words as the promise that they are, you'll start to read something like, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Or you'll start to hear words like, I am the Lord who heals you. And rather than thinking they're for someone else, you start to recognize them as the voice of God in and for your life. God is a speaking God and the scriptures are his voice. If you're walking around thinking, I haven't heard the voice of God yet, I wonder, have you read the voice of God yet? Get in your word because every verse speaks his voice. Here's a third idea. Value his voice above all else. We're trying to cut out the noise. Samuel did that. Samuel did what I encouraged us to do last week and he eliminated all the competing voices. Some of you have a lot of competing voices. Some of you, you need to eliminate all the static that's in your life. Samuel lived a life where he was, he was standing by. He was, he was ready. Samuel was on alert and here's why. Samuel lived a life where he was on alert because he had a praying mother. And scripture talks about her, her name was Hannah. And in 1 Samuel, we read about Samuel's mama, Hannah, and it tells us that she was barren, that she couldn't have kids. And so because she couldn't have kids, rather than lamenting, she would go to the house of the Lord and she would pray every day. And one day she's at the temple and she was overwhelmed with sorrow. And the priest, Eli, asked her what was going on. And she said that she was believing God for kids. And so Eli, the priest who ended up in his usual place, wasn't in that place yet. And so he prophesied, he predicted to her that God would bless her before she came back that next year and that she would have a baby. And so she said to the priest, when God gives me a son, I'm going to bring him back and I'm going to commit him to the service of the Lord in the temple. And that's exactly what she did. She followed through, which is why Samuel was in the position to be in the presence of God. And so parents, Understand this, it's so important that you pray. Pray for your kids, pray for your grandkids, pray for them by name every day, and then let them know. When your kids are going through problems, rather than try to give them your opinion, Say, baby, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for your relationship. I'm praying for your grades. I'm praying for your sickness. And when you begin to tell your kids, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and their situation begins to improve, they will equate the improvement of their situation to the volume of your prayers. Let them know that you're praying for them by name. Plus, it puts them to a, in a position to be in the presence of God. And if you value God's voice, they'll be more likely to value God's voice. Here's the fourth idea. Share what he says. The book of Romans says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard of him? And how can they hear of him unless someone tells them? Guys, if you have God tell you something, tell someone else. Share it. There are so many people who before they hear God's voice are going to hear your voice, which is going to help them to hear God's voice. It's one of the biggest reasons I love life groups. It's really why we do life groups, because it gives us an opportunity to share in a safe environment and to receive in a safe environment. You heard something or read something. You felt something. You thought, I think God might be speaking to me. And so you go to your group, to your pocket of people and you share with them what you heard, what you read, what you felt, and, and, and you realize you don't have to be perfect. I mean, God uses me every week with all my baggage, with all my past, with all my stuff. God speaks to me and he speaks through me. And my goal, my prayer is that no matter what's happened, no matter what you've walked through, no matter what your baggage, your rejection, your struggle, your insecurity, that you will recognize, that you will realize that God wants to speak to and through you, which leads me to the fifth idea, is whatever God says to do, do it. Whatever God says to do, do it. Some of us, we want God to speak to us, and, and when he speaks to us, we ignore his voice. But lack of obedience often creates lack of communication. Whatever God says to do, do it. Obedience is our love language to God. And I've found in my own journey, when I give my obedience to God, 
he often releases his destiny to me for my life, on my life, in my life. And I love the finish of the third chapter of 1 Samuel. It reveals the destiny of this young guy, Samuel. And it says, and the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. He was with him. God didn't let any of his words fall to the ground. His whole life, he was declared as a prophet of, a voice of God, because at a young age, he made a decision. He was going to be close. He was going to be in the right place. He was going to have a surrendered heart. He was going to say, here I am, use me. Whatever it is you need, I'm your guy. That's my prayer for me, that I would say to God, whatever it is you need, I'm your guy. Because while God was speaking, Samuel was listening. Are you? Close your eyes all across this place, would you? God is speaking, Samuel was listening. The question is, are you? Salvation in its genesis is hearing God speaking and responding to his voice. Some of you, God has been speaking to you for years. He's been pushing you. He's been, he's been prodding you. He's been prompting you. He's been, he's been pulling you to him, but you've been in your usual place. This morning, you're at the right place at the right time to make the right choice. So this morning, we're going to give you an opportunity to respond to the call of Jesus and to become part of his family, to be in a relationship with him. It's it's called salvation. It's receiving him as your Lord and as your Savior. And so this morning, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. And, and we're going to do that by doing two things. This is in just a moment with nobody looking around. I'm going to ask for people to raise their hand and make eye contact with me. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and put your hand down. And then I'm going to ask everybody in here to repeat the same prayer after me. And it is a declaration of our need for him. So if you're here today and you say, Sean, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I want to with nobody looking around. Would you raise your hand and make eye contact with me today? Thanks, thanks, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna ask everybody in here to say these words. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, but I'm sorry. Forgive me, change me, come into my life, make me different. Be my Lord, be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer uh, and you believe it in your heart, Scripture says that you have been saved. You've been rescued. And so we're so excited about that, so excited about this journey that you've begun that we call the Jesus journey. And we just got a couple of things that we want to give to you to help you in that. First of all, if you prayed that prayer, would you do us the favor of taking that hello card, tearing the bottom part off, fill it out, check the box that's highlighted in yellow that says I'm choosing to follow Jesus. Either put it in the black buckets when they come around or take them out to the Welcome Center. If you're online and you made that choice, would you just type that in and let our host pastors know? If you're at the Brown County Correctional Facility and you made that choice, would you let our chaplain know that there? We're so excited about this opportunity. And so if you're here in the house, I would love it if you would go to the Welcome Center. We have a little packet for you. It's a CD that uh, if you pop it in the CD player in your car, which most of you have, it's 12 minutes, and it talks about where to go from here. It talks about your journey. Also in that packet, we've got a three-month devotional. We would just love for you to have that. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes one more time. Don't leave yet. We're not finished. Pastor Sonny's going to close us out. But I wonder if you're here and you say, you know what, Sean, I'm a Jesus guy or I'm a Jesus girl, but you know that you haven't been hearing from God. Maybe you're dry right now. And you say, Sean, I sure could use to listen better. If that's you, I want the chance to pray for you. Say, Sean, I need to listen better. Would you just raise your hand so that I could pray for you today? God, thank you for my friends in this place who need you, who are hungry for you, who love you, but maybe they've just become distracted. Help them to tune in. Help them to get on the right frequency to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen.